This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the Ramble. We go until midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States. Hey, folks. Hey, let's go. Hey, let's go see uh, Bubbles. Hi, Bubbles. Uh, Hi, Bubbles. Larry Brown. Yeah. yeah. As you know, I'm constantly doing research. And uh, yeah. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, we talked about uh, you'd seen the filming of uh, Dark Passage with Humphrey Bogart. Yes, up there on uh, on Telegraph Hill. You know that big, beautiful Art Deco building? Yeah, I looked it up. It's 1360 or 1370 Montgomery Street. Yes, it is just gorgeous. It's a, it, it is a testament Very to... Very cool-looking building, yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it, people, you can look at it. What, what's the address? It'll 1360 or 70 Montgomery Street. Yeah. Um, what was that? I had some noise come in for some reason, like somebody hung up or something. Anyway, uh, give that address again. 1360 Montgomery Street. And just put that in and look it up. It, it is just, it's a gorgeous building. Or go watch Dark Passage because that's where it takes place. Yeah, and uh, it's, uh, the person that owns that apartment number than that apartment now uh, they actually have a cardboard cut out of bogey in the window yeah so that's cool and they actually filmed the uh, the scenes inside that apartment were actually filmed in there it wasn't on a set so really i didn't realize yeah. that oh. and uh, when i watched it i just thought bogart kind of looked he was very low energy and then I read a review and it said he just kind of mailed that performance in because he right before that his hair had fallen out in clumps and he that was the first time he wore a full toupee oh boy well anyway so I mean I was I remember I was you know as a, a little kid we were talking about this the other the la one of the last times we were talking that my parents you know they let me go out and roam around and you know parents don't do that today but I mean, I got to, I, I would just go roaming around and I would go up the hill and I'd go up these long flight of stairs and then we'd come down and on the other side was this landing and I come down and they're filming a movie and uh, some people standing there on the, uh, on the landing uh, overlooking this building and I don't know what they're shooting but in later years I re realized that what they were shooting was Dark Passage. Oh, yeah, there's a scene where Bogart's coming home at at the end of it, like really early in the morning, and three guys are on that landing. They're kind of like taunting him. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that, it, it, you know, now I don't, I, I thought that, you know, the entire film was filmed in Hollywood, but that the, the exteriors were shot in San Francisco, in which case, in a lot of cases, when you take a long shot, they were, you know, they were stand-ins. They the Bogart mm -hmm. didn't go to San Francisco to do it, but I guess you say they filmed it there. So, yeah, and there's a scene where he's in some diner, and I thought, oh my god, that looks so like it was a total set. And then I looked that up. They said it was actually a, a, a little restaurant at uh, in China or Japantown at uh, Fillmore and uh, I think Fillmore and Post. Yeah, yeah. I well, love I, I love around here. Yeah, I love San Francisco movies. I always loved them. I, I loved them for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, that I just you know I could identify all the places they were going. You know, uh, and my favorite, I guess, the iconic San Francisco film I would have to say is Vertigo. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, because that was filmed in San Francisco. And the apartment, the, uh, the uh, what the, oh, I guess the apartment, or maybe it's a house, it's kind of an apartment, uh, where, where James Stewart lives is still there, and they have a picture of James Stewart in the window. So, you know. <laughs> uh, but it, it was, it, it, to me, those were iconic films, and the only thing that I, that I hated about them was somebody would like, you know, go up a hill, and then they would come down a hill, and they'd be completely all the way across town. You know, 
but only San Franciscans could identify that, you know. So yeah, that's, uh, that happens so many times in Bullet. Mm -hmm. Like he, he's in the marina, and like two seconds later, he's in like San Bruno. <laughs> yes, right. You know, so anyway, uh, 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 I, Dark Passage I thought was a pretty good film. You know, I always liked it. Yeah, I love those noir movies. They're so cool. Yeah, yeah. I won't spoil the ending for all of you, folks. <laughs> well, yeah, it's worth seeing. Yeah. You know what I just watched? I watched all three hours of The Batman. And I didn't know what to expect, okay? I figured, eh, yeah, another Batman film. Just what we need, another Batman film. This is really good. Really? It's wow. really good. It's dark. He's not played as... He's very vulnerable. He gets the crap beaten out of him at one point in the film. You know? And it, it's just not... It's not the old Batman. It's the Batman that was originally... He's originally thought of as kind of being the world's greatest detective because he appeared in a thing called Detective Comics. And that's how they play this. And it's really incredible. Just incredible. Uh, so the, I spent three hours wasting what's left of my life uh, <laughs> watching <laughs> watching the Batman, but it was worth it. It was worth it. I will have to say. <laughs> Couldn't get Marjorie to watch it, and I told her today. I said you really missed out on a film that probably, if you'd stuck with it, you would like. But she was just determined not to want to like it. You know. Sometimes she gets this in her head, and then I wait a couple of years, and I say, you know, you never saw such and such because you hated it, but you really should. So then I show it to her, and she goes, this is a great movie, you know. So, um, but she, when I say the Batman, they go, she goes, oh, I'm out of here on that. I don't want that, you know. I don't know much about those uh, type of movies, but you know, Batman always had the, uh, always really, really was dark. <laughs> The way they just portrayed the cities was just like these horrible crime-ridden <laughs> places. Well, the, the the here's what they've done. It, when I was growing up, I loved Batman, but I loved him because in the comics, it was almost kind of comic strippy. You know, they were jumping over yeah. giant typewriters and things like that. You know, on the covers, and uh, uh, you know, it was it was it wasn't very dark. It was it was kind of the Batman of Adam West. You know. That what they did with Batman in those days with the Adam West Batman was to kind of recreate the pulp of the comics, you know. But uh, when he first started out, he was in Detective Comics, and it was very dark. And then it got lighter. And then now, when they made movies about it, it got darker and darker and darker. Tim Burton's was more comic strip, and as we got to the Christopher Nolan Batman, we got to a very dark foreboding Gotham City that's you know yeah so I mean uh, but I've always liked Batman I liked him better than Superman you know because what I liked about about Batman was he wasn't a superhero he was somebody who's just like me who if I worked out enough and built a lot of gadgets I could be Batman but I'd never be Superman because I wasn't born on Krypton <laughs> so I always liked Batman over Superman because he was accessible to me. I could become Batman if I worked hard enough, you know. So, um, you know, and all the other comic strip characters were like, you know, Aquaman from the water and, da -da -da and the, all these superheroes. But Batman stood alone as just an average human being who had worked out a lot. That's true, yeah. You know. So, uh, did you re did you read comic books when you were a kid? I did, and I'm old enough to remember got it when I was in high school in Batman the TV show with Adam West. That was actually no. a huge show for a season or two. Oh yeah, absolutely. But uh, uh, what was your favorite when you were growing up? Uh, so let's see. I liked. Uh, don't don't say Archie. No, I did like. Uh, <laughs> there was a comic. Uh, Herbie is a really was a, Herbie. Was fat, he was a fat nerdy kid. The comics these are probably made 64, 65 and really. They uh, yeah, and it was Herbie and he had a uh, he had secret powers with some lollipop. It, 
What? Yeah, it, was really, it, was, it was very bizarre. Yeah, it was really. I'll have to ask my friend Shaggy about that. I, ask I him about Herbie. I, I, I yeah, Her, Herbie. Do you yeah. me, do you remember what company put out Herbie? I think it was Harvey Comics. Oh, I hated Harvey Comics. Yeah. I just hated. Could be Harvey. wrong on that though. Harvey, what else did Harvey have? Oh, they had like that? Casper the Friendly Ghost. Yeah. You know they had all these. Like I always hated Casper. I hated the cartoons. You know, I would go to the Saturday matinees, and then they would run. They run a cartoon. Yeah, I remember those in the matinees, and they had the. Uh, they, someone, it was a comic who used to do that. It was a comic about. They said it was a comic about a dead child. It was like, so yeah. sad. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, they would run these. You know, they would run a cartoon. They would run a serial, and then they would run a feature, which was usually some cheap. 60 minute western you know and um i always every time i went there if i saw casper come on i i wanted to get out of there i just couldn't stand it that and everything on terry tunes heckle and jekyll i hated them never uh, like that man. yeah yeah i mean what do you call it uh, uh, the cartoons that they did those cartoons Paul, uh, terry tunes were just just ghastly did they do Tom and Jerry? They did Tom and Jerry. I could abide Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry were kind of funny. Yeah, but if it was a Warner Brothers cartoon, I was there, riveted to my seat watching it because yeah, I love Warner, Warner Brothers cartoons. Well, I often had a theory about Warner Brothers cartoons versus Disney cartoons, is that all the kids that grew up watching Disney grew up to be Republicans. Basically, they were good American citizens. They were a pillar of the community. But the kids who watched Warner Brothers all became anarchists. <laughs> because everything in Warner Brothers was anarchy. It was something getting even with something else. Okay? Yeah. It, it was like it, the Roadrunner and the Coyote. It's the Roadrunner beating up on the poor old Coyote who who in, a, in and of himself is not a, a, a lovable character because he wants to kill and eat the roadrunner. But we somehow, after a while, you feel sorry for the coyote. Because this... Yeah, I, I always felt sorry for the coyote. Yeah, yeah. And you knew he was always going to get it. You just didn't know what direction it was coming from. You know? Uh, so I, 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 but I loved Warner Brothers cartoons. I loved Bugs Bunny because Bugs Bunny didn't take shit from nobody, you know. Um, and uh, I, I loved Daffy Duck because Daffy was so selfish and so self possessed. <laughs> I, I just, I loved him. I just loved him. He was so like me. <laughs> <laughs> What, what cartoon do you like Warner Brothers right I assume you do oh yeah of yeah. course yeah. Yeah. you know something I, I had that theory you know I just told you about Warner's versus Disney and so one day I decided I'd play out my theory and I asked Abby Hoffman <clears throat> while he was still alive I, obviously I couldn't talk to him from the dead and if I could I would be very rich right now but uh, he um, I asked him what he watched when he was a kid and he said he loved Disney and this was one really? of the biggest anarchists I've ever known. Yeah. I would have thought he just was riveted to Warner Brothers cartoons. And he said, I, I loved the Mickey Mouse and I loved Donald Duck. And I said, you didn't like watching a Daffy Duck? No. Bugs Bunny? No. Jeez. And I'm going, well, there goes my theory. There goes that theory. You know, so. But the, uh, the thing I love about those cartoons, too, is the artwork is just incredible. Compared with the crap they have now. Oh yeah, all hand drawn. You know, listen. Let me ask you this, uh, because I've been doing a lot lately. I don't know what it is. I guess it's that I'm getting older, and I'm getting. I see the the grave ever yawning, as John Cleese once referred to it. <laughs> ever yawning. <laughs> yeah, I did an interview with him, and he says, as I as I get older, with the grave ever yawning, and I always thought that was <laughs> that was just like the most perfect description by a python yeah. of anything. <laughs> um, uh, and he was in our old studio down where well where Twitter is now. Uh, 
But anyway, so um, I, uh, I've been thinking a lot. I wake up in the morning and I'm suddenly thinking about my youth. You know, one of the things I was thinking about today is the first car I ever had was a Pontiac Torpedo, 1939 Torpedo. Um, and um, uh, I, I tried to remember, where did I park it? <laughs> You know, because we lived up on the hill. Where, where did I park it? I can't remember where I parked it. So I'm just trying to remember things about my youth that are just minutiae. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I remember most of it, you know, very fondly. And, uh, but I wanted to find out with you. I mean, what do you remember about your youth? What was your youth like? Where did you spend Where did you grow up? Uh, well, we moved around a lot. Ohio, Michigan. Mm-hmm. That's where. Uh, so you're mid. Always a you're a depressed mid child, I think. Yeah, you you were you were midwesterner then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I remember uh, in first grade. I, this is in Detroit. I, I probably told you this story, but uh, we were at recess, and I uh, I was on the slide, and I looked up, looked up at the sky, and saw all these clouds going over. And for some reason, that just reminded me we we're all going to die. So I went down the slide and I curled up in a fetal position on the ground. And they had to get the teacher to come out and bring me in. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah, and I thought, I, I don't know, I must have seen something on TV that triggered that about the death. But I just remember the clouds going over. just said, I, I thought we're all going to die and life's not worth living. I was literally in a fetal, fetal position under the slide. Son of so I got bitch. sent home with a note. You know, your kid needs help or something. Yeah, well, it, it, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Turns out I was right. <laughs> you looked up at the clouds and you the thought... The going by. And we're for all, some reason, that reminded me we're all going to die. I guess how did, how did time you, or something. As a child, how did you link those two incidences together? Somehow That's what I, I was trying to think. It must have, I must have seen something on TV. I don't know. Because all I know is when I, like, I just photographed some clouds, believe it or not, in time lapse. And they were gray, and they were going by, and so on. And I could see if they were gray. But were these gray clouds? It was kind of white, as I recall. Because billowy white would make you think, oh, life is so wonderful. Yeah, but to Larry kid, Brown, I, to I, Larry I Brown it was a sign of death. Yeah. <laughs> As a, as a kid, I just hated sunny days. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, really we're finding out a lot about Larry Brown today we never knew. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 did your parents, you know, we were talking about, I, maybe we, I talked about it with you. Maybe it was, wasn't you. Maybe it was somebody else. I, you know, but the point is um, that when I was a kid, what I said when I was a kid, my parents just let me go out and wander all over the hills of Marin County and so on. I'm like a, you know, I'm like an 11 year old kid. Oh, me too. Yeah. And, and they didn't even worry about that. Do you think a kid could do that today? Not today. Hell no. You know, they just let me out and they say, "Be home by dinner," and I go wandering. Yeah. I go climbing up Mount, uh, up the mountain, up towards Mount Tamil Pius and so on. Come back, you know, and um, sometimes by myself sometimes with friends and they wouldn't uh, get worried until if you're two hours late they might get be worried and i thought to myself you know really what a wonderful childhood i i, yeah, couldn't, have, I yeah. couldn't have asked for better you had a good childhood right yeah so sure. how did you turn out so fucked up <laughs> i mean it's a good it's a it's an honest question to ask I think I, I just th I think maybe I was overly sensitive. I got so upset, like I, if I saw animals die or something like that. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I was that way too, you know. Um, I, I I was always. Uh, I remember once I was driving my car up the hill, going up the hill back home, and I, a cat ran out in front of the car and I ran over it. Ooh. But then I went out to look for it. No, I couldn't find it anywhere. So I assume maybe it got away, or I, you know. But it just—I was so depressed because I mean I, I don't want to kill a living thing. I've always yeah. been that way, you know. Um, For, I, whereas I, I knew kids that would actually try to kill animals in the street. So yeah, we we were too sensitive. Well, uh, yeah. Did you get did you get beaten up a lot for that at school? Uh. 
You know, that's where I developed my humor. Uh, uh, there were bullies, and I would try to make them laugh. So. This is what I've heard from a lot of comics. That's a common experience. That they yeah. said they learned their comedy making bullies laugh. Mm-hmm. You know, and and uh, and so did you get beat up at all, or did you manage to evade? Not it? really. They they if I made them laugh, they kind of befriended me. I, I became one of their gangs. So. What kind of jokes would you tell to a bully? I mean, this had to be your first act, right? I think I, this is where the, I think this was. If I made fun of myself, I would love that. <laughs> that was a self-deprecation. Oh, okay. Because really, they felt probably they felt what you were doing is you were beating yourself up. Something like that, yeah. But it seemed to work. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you're still alive, you know. Yeah, barely. Uh, what did I do with bullies? I think I did something that was very responsible. I ran. <laughs> I sa I've always said I was very good when I was in school and kids wanted to beat me up of, of the martial art of run foo. You know. <laughs> Just you know, because you weren't supposed to run. You were supposed to stand there and put up with it, right? You know, you know, yeah. if you run, you're you're a you're a sissy. You're a bull, you know, you, and the fact is, I didn't care. I didn't want to get beat up, so goodbye. They never knew what to do with a kid who ran. <laughs> you know, they only knew what to do. Them. Yeah. They, uh, they only knew what to do with a kid who would stand and fight. You know, so. And I assume both of us probably went to schools that weren't that rough. So. Well, I was a, uh, my my school was at the top of Telegraph Hill. It was Garfield School. I think it's still there with another name. Um, you know, it was always always had an effect on me that my grade school was a school named after a president who got assassinated. You know. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it was Garfield School, and uh, you know, it was uh, it was uh, it was a pretty damn uh, it was pretty good school. You know, was, but I lived close to uh, Galileo. Was that around when you were a kid? Uh, y you know, Galileo was a high school. Well, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah, Van Ness and uh, Bay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Galileo, that's where I would have gone to high school if we'd stayed in uh, in San Francisco because from North Beach, that would be the closest high school. So. And, and who's who's Galileo's most famous graduate? Uh, who's Galileo's most famous graduate? I, give me a hint. Uh, he played football. O.J. Simpson? That's right. Really, I thought he. Yeah. I thought he was all the way across town somewhere. No, he was a gal. Hmm. Well, I, that's very good. Then they, you know, I mean, they should uh, be proud of the fact that they're the uh, the school of. Uh, uh, <laughs> they have a knife in the foot. Well, I would like to say face. killers, but I refuse to say he killed anybody because no court of law. He was acquitted. Yeah. Well, he was acquitted, and so therefore, as a person who believes in the judicial system and believes in America and believes in our right to a, 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 a trial and if we're found innocent then we should be treated as though we are innocent and they've never done that with O.J. Simpson no and most Americans will tell you oh he did it well but they never proved it you know so it's my job even though maybe I deep down go well he, well, he did it to say, uh, no, he didn't, you know, because he wasn't found guilty of it. But that, you know, but they they went and got him on other stuff, you know. Later on, that whole thing in Vegas, that was just, a, that was kind of trying to just make sure he spent some time in jail, you know. Yeah, that was really unfair. They had piled, they gave him a super bad sentence, because, and they, you know, that was for what he what they perceived he'd done before, not the crime that he was right, and and all he on. was doing with the with uh, with with what he was accused of doing in Vegas was he was trying to get back stuff he believed belonged to him, right? You know. They charge him with kidnapping or some. Crap. Well, what happened is, and we've got to go here in a second, but quickly they in those days what happened was people would see something that O.J. Simpson had. And they would steal it so that they could then sell it somewhere as O.J. Simpson's this thing or his Heisman Trophy or whatever. And he just wanted it back. It had been stolen from him. And he got a bunch of thugs to go in with guns yeah. 
you know, and and that they wound up spending, I think, ten years in prison for that. Or yeah, something. close to ten. Yeah. 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 So anyway, hey, listen, we have run out of time for this little session of we have. Al- Alex and and Bubs. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. <laughs> We're both running out of time. <laughs> You're both running out of time. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is, Larry Bubbles <laughs> Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. We love Larry, don't we? Well, yes, we love Larry. Uh, by the way, we didn't have uh, Phil tonight because Phil's got a uh, 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 photography club where he beats up with people on with cameras. And um, he'll come on tomorrow night with us, but uh, I know you're all waiting for that. Anyway, uh, hi, how are you? What's happening? How was your weekend? Everything okay with your weekend? Okay, I'm glad everything was good with your weekend. We have a bunch of people waiting to start off this uh, little uh, festival here. So let me just uh, bring them in here. And uh, let me see here. Go to our Zoom panel as it's coming in. There we go. So far, we got Kevin. Hello, Kevin. How are you? Hi, Alex. How are you doing? And uh, Jeff, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I got to turn oh, something down. Yeah, yeah. You got, just uh, kill the browser. Just never turn off the browser before I come on with you. Come never on. No, no, just turn off the browser. See where the browser is? No. Anyway, you don't uh, see the browser. What's happening? How was your weekend? Everything okay with your weekend? Okay, mm. I'm glad everything was Did good. Did you see your browser? Bunch of people waiting to start off this. Uh, oh, boy here so uh, this is insane he never understands you don't run your browser you know what it used to happen in radio we used to go uh will you please turn your radio down uh well, well you know what it is interesting because i do the same thing but <clears throat> my uh when you come on mm-hmm. it takes a couple of seconds it's about five or ten seconds you're on and I got to reach up and mute the browser. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, there is a delay there. Well, just get You're rid already of already on telling them to turn off the browser, and yeah. we're just seeing yeah. you coming just on. Just turn off your browser. Turn off your damn browser, damn it. But we can't hear you. We don't know that we're on until yeah. you're already yelling at us. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Well, I mean, just if, if, when you sign on, when you are when you sign in here, just turn. get rid of your browser before I even answer it yet. You know? Yeah, but then we don't know you're on. We could be sitting here. We could sitting here, you know, playing with ourselves or something, and you'll be on. And well, we'll do that. It'd be us. very interesting to watch. You'll catch us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, but uh, but you all know to turn it down. He doesn't know how to turn off the browser after all this time. He hasn't. Yeah, it's just it a little mute button up there on the tab. It's really yeah. Easy. It, you just it, gotta catch it quickly. It, yeah. Yeah. Well. I, I wish I could get together with him and show him how to do it, and then he could he'd know how to do it. Yeah, he'll get it eventually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, um, he usually I, just kills it and then oh, comes back. Oh, I'm back. surprised his wife hasn't hasn't shown it to him. You know, so oh yeah, uh, yeah Jack, she may have. He'll yeah. be back though. Jack Bishop is calling early. I don't know why. Ah. We don't need him this early, do we? <laughs> no. Oh. no. Block him. <laughs> uh, let's see here, Thank, Josh. Good to see you, Josh. On a, you on, on not a night we expect you. Uh, now you get a you get bonus nights. I get bonus <laughs> nights now. Uh, anyway, hello to, today. To, hello to Charlie Wallace, of course, yeah. and to Jack Bishop, who for some reason decided to call early into the show. Yes, yes, I heard you and uh, Larry Bubbles Brown talking about your school experiences. Oh. And talking about uh, uh, the fact that O.J. Simpson went to Galileo in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. I was across town at Polly. And you know who the most, the two most famous Polly graduates other than me? I have no idea. George Fetterman. And George Washington. No. <laughs> no, no. Casper Weinberger. Okay, now. 
How many people here know who George Fenneman was? Anybody? Nobody. 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 So that one doesn't count. Because if nobody can re- is amazed by, ooh, you know, if I see, say O.J. Simpson Galileo, we all go, ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. but you say George Fenneman, they go, well, who? Well, you see, I didn't know that myself until In about case five people years don't ago. know, he was one of the cast members of The Thing. But also he was uh, uh, Groucho Marx's uh, No, 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 no. He didn't just get my joke that I'm I saying the it. most I famous it. thing he did was he was in The Thing. You see, I would have said the most famous thing he did was being uh, Groucho Marx. Well, we know Nazi. that, but the joke is that I said the thing, which is a movie he was in, but one yes. of the lesser lights in that film. Yeah, yeah, he was the guy wearing the sweater. Yeah, he was the guy wearing the sweater, right? And uh, and and George Fenneman started his radio career where? San Francisco, I assume. I think it was at NBC in San Francisco. Yeah. Oh, uh, when it was KNBC and not KNBO? No, no, it was actually, at that time, it was KPO. Oh, wait. I remember we had an old radio with one of those push-button radios, yeah, you know. Yeah. that. But let's not get into this crap, because nobody okay. cares. <laughs> nobody <laughs> cares. I don't, I don't even care, damn it. What I am mean, I doing I here? get you going on old radio stuff, and then you're pulling stuff out of your ass that nobody cares about. You know, yeah, I'd, pull, I'd pull my hemorrhoids out if I could. You know, I mean, the last thing I like to, like to talk about is radio. You know. Well, all right, we won't talk, but I, I got some news Because for you. it I is the talk- lowest form of show business, you must know. I think you're right. Yeah. It, it, number two lowest form of show business is selling my pillows on TV. But, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say? What were you saying? Well, I... Uh, I found out about a new, I'm not even going to tell you about it because it's old guy stuff and I'll call you about it and tell you about it on your own. But it's something that you might want to look into. Want to look into? Why? Because you have neuropathy. Well, I have neuropathy, yeah. But I'm, but taking, found- I'm taking a pill for it that I'm very happy with. You're ta- yes, I know what you're because taking. Because it makes me loopy. Like tonight, I couldn't figure out what <laughs> button to push to start the streaming. That's, that's how bad this gets. Well, I uh, I found a doctor yeah. who has a new treatment for neuropathy. I just started it today. Oh, they cut off the uh, legs? Not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> because they bang, began, they begun with Charlie's toes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you see, I didn't... Toes don't hurt anymore. Well, you see, <laughs> they I don't hurt anymore. Mention, I, I wasn't going to mention this on my program, The Intersection, tonight, because Charlie always checks in. But uh, uh, this doctor that I uh, had just found out about, I know somebody who's uh, 82-year-old father Mm. is being treated by this guy. Mm -hmm. And like me, uh, uh, he was pretty well along with neuropathy, uh, even more more so than you. Well, mine is, mine is, I just have numb feet, that's all. Well, that's what I have. You know, and my numb feet, I, I'm going to admit something. My numb feet, uh, first part of this year, put me on a walker. And I've been using well, a walker. Well, mine aren't that numb. Mine are that numb. Oh, okay, mine aren't that numb. No, you they... know, if this was big news, Jack, why don't you say that the doctor can help Charlie grow his toes back? Well, <laughs> I, don't think he, I don't think he can do that, but... Uh, uh, I was pretty impressed with the um, thing that he's doing, and he's and he's using some sort of laser thing to re-stimulate nerve growth. You talked about this the other night. Yes, so, yes. And well, you're I repeating my, yourself my, now. I, I had, well, hey, you know, I'm almost as old as you are. We're supposed to do that. Believe me, uh, I'm not that bad. Well, hey, don't worry, it's coming. Was this uh, the thing with the anal probe, Jack? As a matter, as, as a matter of fact, it is, and, and they shove it as deep as they can get it and twist it. What's, what's this? I was watching today. If you want to see some one of the funniest things you've ever seen in your life, go find the uh, uh, Gilbert Gottfried at the roast for George Takai. And he does one gay joke after another. And one of them is, uh, doctor uh, 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 is is working over a, a gay guy, or as he calls him, a fag in the joke. 
uh, a gay guy, and uh, he looks up his ass and pulls out a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> and he says, what's this bouquet of flowers doing in your butt? And he said, was there a card with it? <laughs> it's like the proctologist says to the nurse, can you get me a butt light? And she brings him in a Budweiser. He said, no, butt light, not Bud White, not Bud Light. Boy, you really don't know how to tell jokes. <laughs> you're, you're worse than I am, Doc. Only on this show. Yeah. Boy, you know, you, the most important thing in telling a joke is to uh, timing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, timing, just like your your joke about the thing. Nobody, everybody's sitting here scratching I didn't, ass. that wasn't a joke. It was a observation of great hum, uh, a humorous nature. Uh, but you said to Jack, you didn't understand the joke. No, Joe. It, it, well, he didn't. I mean, he did. Maybe he did. I don't know. I'm not in his. I'm not in his brain, it. and I don't want to be there. It's, okay. it's oh. messy in there. I got it. it. Yeah. Well, you're supposed to. You're somewhat of an intellectual. <laughs> somewhat. Somewhat. <laughs> okay. Hey, has, Ke has Kevin mentioned the uh, garlic festival there in Gilroy? <laughs> no, but no, what about it? Ready. Well, is, well, isn't the garlic festival starting this weekend, or was it last weekend? No, it's in July. Last yeah, time. in the summer. Last weekend in July. Oh, gee, I thought it was. You actually drive down in that neighbor in that part of the world, and you can actually smell garlic. Yeah. And one of the best smells that I ever got when I used to have a, a T top, right? I take the top off, and I drive up to Napa at night during yeah. during the season when all the the grapes were getting ripe and you smelled all this wine in the air it was just in the air it was wonderful that's when they smash it before they harvest it the, the garlic yeah, yeah. oh uh, tea yeah tops tea tops the lowest form of convertible <laughs> Who well it certainly that? wasn't the cheapest i'll tell you that because <laughs> yeah. it was a 300 zx so you know well you always drove pretty neat cars if i remember except well that, i mean once i had the money to buy them yeah except for know. that 48 pontiac that you had uh, no the 1939 pontiac torpedo oh forgive them all which was a collector's item it was, <laughs> it was. when you had it, it and, and when i sold problem. that because it went bad i turned it in for a 1937 plymouth Oh, for the good stuff. Oh, it was it was yeah. like a square. It was it was really old, and then I got a Ford. That was my next car. It was a Ford. Everybody had a Ford sooner or later. Yeah, nineteen forty nine Ford, something like that. Everybody yeah. had a nineteen forty nine Ford. Yeah, nope. and then nope. uh, you know, then what was my next car? I don't remember what the next car was. I th I think it was a Mustang. Yeah, you were driving a Mustang when I saw you in Houston. Yeah, yeah. I had two, 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 I had a Mustang I bought in California, brought to Houston. Then it was so damn hot in Houston, I had to buy a new one so I could have it with air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have a car in Houston without air conditioning. <laughs> Called death if you don't. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. Uh, hello, Josh. How are you tonight? I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, good? <laughs> Terrific. Um, you know what? I'm really, I'm just, I'm getting so incensed at this alleged president we have. Oh boy. Yeah. No, it's, it's, you know, I see every day what's happening in Ukraine and we're not, we're, oh yeah, we're sending some weapons, but hey, we're gonna send them by, Fed, by FedEx. They'll be there next week. Well, by then, how many people are gonna be dead? You know, I, I, I saw on the news last night, the last batch of weapons, they don't know if they actually got to the right people. What do you mean? How do they not know? The U.S. government doesn't know who received them. Well, maybe they put the wrong address on the uh, on the label. Yeah, maybe. Who yeah, knows? but maybe I mean, I, I just think I just think we should go in there. I just think we're gonna we're gonna have to answer to history for this one. You know. I asked this question: We who? Hmm? Yeah. We is United it? United States uh, uh, we, we or, is, or 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 NATO? the United States, because we did nothing. All we did, we send them weapons, okay? And then we even argued about what weapons we were sending them. Oh, let me turn that thing off. Yeah, you know. 
So, but uh, who has sent them weapons? What major oh. Western uh, power? Uh, uh, England has. Germany has. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, they sent. We sent uh, some of their leaders over there too. You know, you well, got that's true. You, that's true. You, you know, I mean, here's here's Biden, and he's like ten feet from from uh, Ukraine, and he doesn't go. You know, I mean, it, come on. And then it took what's his name from England, Boris. Uh, Boris uh, Johnson. Johnson. Boris Johnson. I was going to say Yeltsin. <laughs> Boris Johnson. Yes, uh, Charlie. Well, uh, to be um, clear. Johnson went after the Russians had withdrawn. When Biden was over there, the Russians were actively bombing. So I, I don't fault him for that. Well, then he should go back now. <laughs> really, I'm serious. Show support, you know. Show that kind of support. But he does, he's not going back there. Well, you got to remember if— the, And God if, knows he has the frequent flyer miles. Well, you got to remember if Trump was in office, he'd be going to see the Russian side. Yeah. 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 He'd be helping the Russians. What do you What do you think, Josh? I mean, how, aren't you getting a little sick of of the way we're handling this situation? That these people are in dire need. Yeah, I, I would be fine with more support for sure. I mean, I don't think that uh, I don't think that we've provided really all that much, unless there's something we've provided the public doesn't know about. But I mean, you know, it's it's fine to supply some weaponry, but uh, you know, I don't think that's that's gone far enough. Um, at some point, I'm sure that the tide may turn if it. He, you know, I don't I don't know how long the Ukrainians could go with just getting some weaponry help. I mean, eventually, you know, they're going to run a little short on manpower, um, and over time, you know they're gonna they're gonna suffer some battle fatigue and you know they're gonna have their own supply problems as they're cut off from certain other routes and stuff like that so you know they are gonna start to maybe have issues i'm not saying the russians won't continue to as well but you know over time the russians do have the you know a larger area of landmass to draw resources from and um you know they have more people you know so uh, an elongated war to me would seem to favor them in a few ways. So, I mean, I, I wish that NATO forces would would join together, and honestly, would send some troops in and enforce some uh, some air cover for them. But you know, I, I mean, I understand. I, I don't really get why they want. I understand that Ukraine is not a member of NATO. Um, but that's only in a lot of ways because they've been so scared to let them in that it would make the Russians mad um, and that they would start a physical war over it. But that's exactly what's happened anyway. Well, you know, and that's been my, I'm just saying that's yeah. been my point all along is this is it's 1914 all over again where everybody is taking steps that they think will avoid the war. But those steps are actually causing the war. I mean, you yeah, know, well, I mean, but that's how I see it. Here's the thing. You brought it up to me and to Kevin when we had a private Zoom call together, as we do once a week. And you made the point, and I had to just say, that's, that's it succinctly, that we're being bullied by the Russians, who quite frankly have a lousy military. They really are not a good military. And when we look back at their history, they had a lousy military. They've always had a lousy military. And that the idea of oh God, we're at the we're in World War Two is three is just around the corner if we do something like that. It's already here. Okay. Well, well maybe we what we should uh, urge Biden <clears throat> to do is say, hey, Putin, me, you, downtown Brussels, two NATO nine millimeters with one round each, twenty paces, turn and fire like. Kings used to do. Yeah, well, that's a fun idea, but the fact but is, it's not going to happen because no, no, nobody no. is bold enough to say that. That's a world leader. Yeah, but you, that's not something that's going to happen. Period. Okay, you know, I just, I just, think, I mean, but, but it would be nice if they would do more. I mean, I, I don't, you know, look, I would be fine with almost with whatever because, 
I, I just think that, you know, the Russians are, look, they're a threat to everybody everywhere right now. And this is an opportunity to, to, to check them, you know, to put your policy of containment back into play and say, listen, you know, we're not going to chase them across the Russian border or anything like that, but we're going to run them out of Ukraine. And we're going to hurt them in the process. And that is going to really put a check on them for for a, a, a good long while. You know, if it leads to other things within their own borders that comes from their own people, you know, removal of Putin or reforms, what it, then that's fine, okay? But I don't think that's our goal here, nor should it be. But, look, they're a threat to a democratic country that was openly friendly with the world, East and West, you know, has sought to join NATO at times, um, trades with us, you know, trades with other European nations. You know, they're, they're not a, a threat to anyone, and, you know, and, and, and they've asked for the assistance and can't receive it. So I'm just saying, you know, what, what does it take to get the countries of the world involved? I mean, I've lost a lot of faith in NATO because I know that they keep saying that, well, you know, if, if they do violate a NATO border, that would, well, boy, we'll really, there'll be consequences. We'll really have to. Turn yeah. It you up. watch and, nothing, and I, nothing will happen. I mean, right. And I shake my head and I say, I don't know, I'm going to file that under, I'll believe it when I see it, because I think they could roll some tanks into Poland and then everybody would say, well, you know, they only went a few miles. I mean, I'm, that's what I'm saying. It would be 1914 and 1939 all over again, where they would just say, well, you know, uh, you know, they were only you know, a couple of miles into Poland you know, and they were right, looking for you know, and they needed they needed I mean, gas and a bathroom. Right. Yeah, right. You yeah. know, I mean, once upon a time, there were some Russian folks living there anyway. So mm, what's the harm that no one really got hurt? Right. You know, we don't want another war, but it just goes down that path where it leads to one anyway, except you give them the upper hand to start off you let them strike the first blow and you give them momentum which just prolongs the war so yeah you know i, I don't look i don't like it i mean i would be fine with an escalation by nato forces that was fine and if that offends vladimir putin then well good you know, I mean, well, I mean, if, if Putin mm -hmm. is just being a, a, a bully mm -hmm. and a bra and he's bragging. Uh, he, you know, it's not going to kick him off into World War Three. Okay, he's not going to launch a nuclear weapon. And by the way, if everybody's got the idea of a nuclear weapon being Hiroshima or Nagasaki, the nuclear weapons today are much lower yield and much smaller. They're kind of pinpoint nukes. Am I right about that, Josh? Well, they have, yeah, they have all different kinds. I mean, I, I'm, I think, you know, that we have some, you know, super ones as well. Yeah. But you know, they do have, I guess, what they would call more like tactical weapons that would be, you know, more for the eradication of a of a of a strike force somewhere that's engaged in an action mm -hmm. without doing much damage or limiting the damage to you know surrounding areas um you know as far as i know i mean like you said i i don't know i mean i'm sure we have ones that can just just destroy an entire city but we also have you know a smaller tactical one that can destroy an entire you know brigade or whatever that's involved in an action but yeah i mean look i i don't really know where all this is going i mean to me it just seems like by not helping them we're going to prolong it. And I, I don't know if that's better or worse for the Ukrainians. I don't know. My gut tells me it's worse because in a prolonged war, you know, the side with the most resources and manpower should have the upper hand in the long run. Now, that doesn't mean that I think the Russians will conquer because I think in a prolonged war, the other thing that, that will develop yeah. if the other side has the willpower for it is you will yeah. see, you know, insurgency or guerrilla tactics or whatever and that will eat away at the russians for forever but that's only assuming that they care 
such as we did. We left Afghanistan because we finally got tired of it. But it took 20 years, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's no well, way well, for the Ukrainians but, to live. But don't forget, the Russians left uh, Afghanistan, too. Right. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but after uh, 20 years or something. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. but, but here's the question that, that I'm going to throw out here. Maybe it's time to send Vladimir Putin a reminder that we're the only country that ever did drop him. Not once, but twice. He knows that. Eh, maybe not. Maybe he doesn't remember. He knows that. Everybody, everybody remember. remembers it because that's our that's the big sin on us is that we probably did <laughs> drop those bombs yeah. when we didn't have to. Well, I think I think maybe he needs to be reminded. He's you know he might not wind up dealing with the British or the French or civilized mm. countries. Yeah, but then back then we had uh, Roosevelt and we had Truman. This time we yeah. got Biden, the droopy <laughs> dog of presidents. You know, I think Biden should take one for the team. He should just go over to Ukraine and you know, if it gets bombed, then we start the war. Yeah, I mean, I would fly Air Force One in there. Yeah, there you go. Go ahead, take that down, guys. You know. Well, Alex, I think you had one of the better ideas last week that I heard, when you said, "Okay, we know that Putin wants what is it, the eastern mm -hmm. side of Ukraine." Mm -hmm. Let's say, all right, instead of giving you that, why don't we give you a whole damn other country somewhere? You know. <laughs> Give them Venezuela. We're pissed at Venezuela. No, he can have Venezuela. What other countries could he have? Uh, you know, give him Cuba, like they almost had in the sixties. Well, no, Cuba's a nice place, and the people well, are, the people are nice down there. That's not they a are. good idea. What do you but got that against would shock the hell out what, of you, what do you got against Cuba? Not a damn thing. I yeah. want to go there one day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're they're they I mean, We just I just we just seem to be. I mean, we're not at appeasement. Okay, but we're also not at confrontational war. We're like somewhere in between. And, I, and it's just, by definition, that's half-hearted, I suppose. Hey, I got an idea. Let's give the, Rus yeah, let's give the Russians Fresno. <laughs> let's give the Russians Florida. Oh, we got to drive Florida. Give them Florida. Give them Florida. Florida. Give them well, we'll get to Florida in a second here. Um, in fact, we can get to it now. Um, yeah, it'll Di break off real easy. It'll float over there. Yeah, well, Disney, mm -hmm. Disney is being threatened by the, well, they're going to vote tomorrow. See, a, a Disney World is its own municipality. And when it was set up, the deal they made with the state of Florida was, we're going to build this thing. You're going to let us have it as our own municipality, run by us uh, and, uh, you know, not beholden to the rest of the state, but run by us. Uh, and uh, they said, okay, because essentially what they were saying is, we're going to take this all this swamp out here, and we're going to build something here. And if we don't do that, it's still going to be swamped 20 years from now, right? So we want the right to be able to have our own police departments, our own fire departments, our own uh, infrastructure a uh, governmental uh, uh, group, I guess. Maybe there's a mayor of Disney World. I have no idea. There probably <laughs> is. Oh, Mickey. Yes, yeah. Mickey. Yeah. Uh, and now what they want to do is take that away from them. And uh, Disney does, of course, doesn't want them to do that. But they're going to vote tomorrow to do away with it. Of course, <laughs> Disney's then going to throw the weight of their lawyers against the state and probably say, "Hey, this is a this is something that's been." in existence for a long time you can't just suddenly go back on the deal okay that you made with us to build disney world here what i'm thinking if i were disney you know i got enough fuck you money at this point between all the marvel movies and the this and the that and everything else i'll just i i just say to them you want to do that we're closing down disney world yeah we're closing down Disney World. You can then get lose about 80% of your tourism to this fucking swamp, okay? Uh, and believe me, that would be a big bite. I mean, how many people are employed by Disney World? Tens of thousands, I would imagine. Absolutely. I mean, the amount of revenue they bring into that state uh, is and and then all the things around it. I mean, do you think there'd be a Universal City Studios 
if it weren't for Disney World? You know. So I just think they should say to them, you want to do that? Okay, we're shutting down Disney World. And we'll only bring it back once you lift this ban on us being a municipality. Okay, where am I wrong? What What were they... I don't really pay much attention to that you know, DeSantis and all the culture arguments they get. What, what were they arguing with Disney World about anyway? Because why, why Disney, Disney World, Disney hate? World was against the uh, "Don't Say Gay" thing that DeSantis passed. Okay. You know that you can't bring up gay in schools. And, I just find. Uh, uh, I mean, let's face it. Disney's between a rock and a hard place here. Yeah. Because the, the gays, if he doesn't do it, the gays aren't going to visit Disney World. Hell, the staff will walk out because half of them are gay. Yeah, yeah. And Mickey's giving you the finger as he walks out the door. You know. So they don't want to do that, mm -hmm. and they want to stand by, basically that they're not for this. Uh, and and uh, that's their that's their position, and they can't do anything uh, other than that. And then they've got the DeSantis on their ass for it. So I just find the picture of DeSantis wearing his J. Edgar Hoover pinafore, and that'll probably solve it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But any thoughts on this things going on down down in Florida? I mean, just another DeSantis piece of crap, you know? Yes, Alan. I, I agree with what you just said about DeSantis. I don't agree that Disneyland ought to shut down or Disney World. I think they ought to fight it. But how do you fight it? You, you know, it'll take forever for you to fight it. In the and, meantime, it's bad publicity. For yeah, the, bad publicity for the state. And DeSantis is going to run for president. You want as much bad publicity for him right now as possible. All Disney has to say is we're closing down temporarily until you give us back our status as a municipality. And I will bet you within a month they do it. Because all of a sudden, There's a all that tourism that is gone. Into the economy. What? There's a lot of money, like you said, that Disney's putting in the economy. Yeah. They probably employ 100,000 people. Could it be that that many, do you think? I don't know. Uh, no, no, not not a lot Florida. of people to run a theme park. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly tens of thousands. Yeah. And if they don't lift it, they can say, okay, we're picking up stakes here and we're going to move Disney World to yeah. somewhere else. Who wants it? You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. uh, Marin County. No. <laughs> I'm sure Abbott would put in a bid for it. For Texas? Yeah. 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 Heartbeat. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little too hot there, isn't it? Well, it, it, yeah. it, well it's hot in Florida. Yeah, it's hot and muggy in Florida. Yeah. I just, I don't, I don't, why Republicans now, I mean, it's like anytime they're offended by any business or anything from doing anything, you know, they want to take government action against them and then boycott them, which is the same thing that they complained for many years that, you know, liberals would always do when they got their feelings hurt, which I agreed with, by the way. Yeah. You know what I mean? But now that's, they do this all the time now. I mean, like almost any time someone you know, doesn't agree with them. Mm -hmm. They they want to boycott them and, you know, they start this, you know, campaign against them. Part of that, I guess, is okay because that's a personal choice. But then they, they, always, they always want to take all these steps, these legislative or governmental actions mm -hmm. against them, which is like, I mean, the road to fascism. I mean, I, well, I don't... Yeah, but you got to understand, though, I mean, uh, don't you agree that he's thinking of running for president? And he oh, figures, yeah, oh, sure. everybody's I mean, gonna. He's, I, I beat up Disneyland, I, you know. Yeah, I beat, I mean, I beat right. up Mickey Mouse, you know. Well, he's, yeah, he's just doing it to, you know, satisfy people and get people going about it. Right. I mean, it's just their latest thing that they're on, you know, on to. But, but you're right about that. I mean, the Republicans have always been anti-big government, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, and all of a sudden, yeah. here they want to take away uh, hmm. uh, the right they gave a community. To, I mean, let me put it this way. I think, if I'm not mistaken, if you're if you're a, a town in Florida, you have the right over your dominion. You know. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Is this this particular uh, municipality does not agree with us, so we're going to you know 
disbar them or whatever. Not, not allow them to be a municipality. Well, anymore. whatever happened to local choice? I mean, if my yes. local, if the if the state of Ohio passes a law, and my local village thinks it's ridiculous, and they have a council meeting, and they adopt a resolution, you know, which is worthless and all that, I get it. Yeah. Saying this is a stupid law, it didn't say we weren't going to enforce it, right? You know, the law is the law. They just said we think it's stupid, and and we. You know, we disavow it or whatever, and then all of a sudden the governor says, "Well, you're not going to be a leg- uh, a municipality anymore." Well, what the hell is that? I mean, that's that's how we got where we are today. That's that's a legacy of our founding. Is you know, local committees got together and said, "We're not happy about some of these laws, and we're gonna here's what we're gonna do about it." Yep. So, I mean, that's. I mean, I don't, I don't understand that. I mean, they, they were against that for, for many years, and they, and they cried about it when liberals did it. And like I said, I probably agreed a lot of times because I don't think that anyone should do that. But Josh, this you know? Republican Party is not your dad's Republican Party. This is a new, well, right. different animal. Yeah, right. I understand. I mean, that's, well, it's I mean, not you know, the, it's not really the Republican boy, Party that's anymore. Exactly the point. Yeah, yeah, it's not. What, what'd you say, the, Kevin? I said that's exactly the point. It's not yeah. the old Republican Party. So what is it? It's the new Republican Party. Would you call it the new Republican Party, or would you want to give it another name like? Uh, well, we can do all kinds are. of names. I, how about asshole motherfuckers? Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 unnamed. Well, I you know I just I I just don't <laughs> think. For instance, they are as much a Republican as uh, as uh, as Trump was a Republican. You know, well, that's where a lot of this shit started. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, is, is is Trump a conservative? No, not necessarily no. started there, but you know, it really started back with Gingrich when he started all the the bullshit. But he brought it out, and you know, made it. He turned the light on bright. I can only did. name one true Republican right now. Well, maybe two. Uh, there's a couple in there. There's a few in there. Yeah. I mean, there are. Mitt Romney, yes, you know, definitely a Republican, and and a, and I don't know if he's a conservative, but he's a he's a certainly he's a he's a Republican. And Liz, uh, Liz in the ever Dirksen mode, Liz, Liz Cheney, while Liz Cheney, yeah. uh, while she's kind of severe when it comes to her right wingedness, uh, she is still, I think, a Republican more more than any of those other assholes that are going after her, you know. Well, there's four or five of them in there that, that are, you know, they'll, they'll stand up for what they want, but uh, they'll also stand up to uh, the, they have reality checks. Yeah. But I mean, where, where is that, where is that overriding group of Republicans now who, who are, who are in the middle somewhere saying, Hey, you know, a lot of this is going off the deep end. They're not. You don't have them anymore. They all feel, for some reason, that they've got a. There's about five of them, and they're all resigning this year. I I heard this woman who's running for uh, for Senate in uh, in Arizona, and she honestly believes the election was stolen. Okay, and she honestly believes a lot of this crap. And there's no problem with believing it, but you know you have to you have to believe it and then move on. Or believe it and show it to be true. Yeah. Right, you know, but there's I mean, no I believe it, but you didn't have any facts. But you just to say it, facts, just, move on. just to say it for the sake of saying it, and we all know this election was stolen. <clears throat> and if I become, oh, she's running for governor. She said, if I become governor of Arizona, I, I'm not going to even pay any attention to Joe Biden because he's not president of the United States. Oh. And she's gonna, she may win on that in Arizona. Right. No. Well, maybe with those. Uh, what we used to call moderate Republicans need to break off from this other Republican party. Maybe we've reached the point where it's time for the third party to be from the, the, the only problem with that is- You don't want that as a third party. You, 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 but, no, yeah. but, but no, you don't want a third, them to split off into a third party because the problem <clears> is that will weaken the Republicans, oddly enough, in the, in the mixture that we have in this country. Uh, and I don't know if we want that specifically. I mean, I really believe we should have more than, maybe more than three, maybe yes. more like four different parties running. Yeah. But like, as long like as you're only going to have th- uh, two, 
it's better than having three where one of those parties split up because then that, that party that split up will never get elected to office again because they would never have the strength. You say that like that's a bad thing. Well, I'm you. saying it's a bad thing because uh, as much as I hate Republicans, as much as I hate the right wing, I do like the loyal opposition existing. I think it keeps everybody a little more honest. Hopefully, it should, but they're not. It's mm -hmm. not what they're doing. They're just being the naysayers to everything. Nothing gets done in this country anymore because they won't vote for it. If it's something Biden mm -hmm. wants. It's it's no good. He could he could want to give out you know wax lips to everybody, and they would say, you know, we're not going to vote for that. We can't afford wax lips. You know, so anyway. Mm -hmm. Ah, but if he tells those Republicans that marijuana will give you a blue steel heart on, they'll vote for that. Hmm. Nah. Yeah. No. No. Nah. Uh, but the, the marijuana thing isn't even an issue anymore. You know what's happening here in New York City? This is amazing. You know, we've, we, we legalized marijuana in the state of New York. And, I thought we, you just and, and we're, we're vacating all the sentences against people who were ever sent to prison for uh, marijuana. And the first hundred dealerships, licenses to be given out, will be given out to people who spent time in jail for marijuana charges, okay? That's great. Uh, you know, I, I do believe that dealers should be the first one to get it because they know more about marijuana than anybody else. But um, so we got all this going. But you know what's happened here in New York City? You know, all these head shops that you have to sell the pipes and the bongs and everything like that. Guess what they're selling now? Pot. And they aren't even licensed to do it, but they're selling <clears throat> pot. And they somehow can't tell them not to because it's legal. So I'm going to so go downtown then, tomorrow and see if I can find one of those head shops and, and buy myself some pot. You know? <laughs> but but they, they're, they're, it's the way it's going. Hey there, uh, I, I, Brian, I haven't even said hello to Brian tonight. <laughs> How you doing, Brian? Doing good. Yeah, how's everything at work? Happy 420. Oh, is this 420? Oh, this is 420, yeah, 420, isn't it? And we're talking yeah, about yeah. marijuana. I'm psychic. I, I heard uh, Mike Tyson went up to Golden Gate Park to smoke out with everybody. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Mike yeah. Tyson. 420 is the, is in case people don't know, there was a, do you know how it all started, the 420 thing? Supposedly marijuana hmm. is a code word for marijuana, 420. Hmm. Uh, and people go, well, how did that start? Here's how it started. There was a school. I think maybe it was maybe in Florida. Maybe it was in, in San Texas. Rafael. Was it in? It was in San Rafael. Yeah. You're absolutely right. In San Rafael, California, where kids would say, "We'll meet outside the school at 4:20 and light up a joint." No, they were going to check out an abandoned pot patch up there, and they were meeting at 4:20 to go to to find it. That's the original. And that's how it started. The term. That's where it started. Okay. And they were up in, outside the school in San Rafael. Okay, because I saw an interview with a guy who said he was one of the kids that came up with the name 420. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they were meeting uh, at 420 to go find this abandoned pot, pot patch. Yeah. So, up in San Rafael. And that's why 420 is now synonymous with marijuana. Uh, and it went on from there. Which is pretty cool. Grateful Dead started all that crap. Yeah. But uh, I used the term doobie the other night with my 28-year-old oh, grandson. Boy, did you sound like an old guy. <laughs> and, and, did, and he said to me, what's a doobie? Not a don't be. Well, he's, he's, a, he's a brother. <laughs> no, um, only, only half. Only half a brother. What is, what, I, is it, what is the term now? Is there any modern term? Charlie, you're up on what the kids are saying. Blunt. I am? Who told you that? I don't Blunt. know. I just assumed... It's a blunt. It's a well. That, that was been. It's been a blunt for. Yeah, that was twenty years. My ago. father in, in in bands that he worked where they all smoked pot, you know. <clears throat> they called it a blunt, a yeah. spleef. Mary Jane. That was. Yeah. That reefer. Was, huh? Reefer. 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 Yeah. Way back. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, well. Uh, 
what was it? What was it? Was the Cab Calloway song? Uh, Reefer, well, Reefer Man. Reefer Cab Man. Calloway song. Yeah, yeah, Reefer Man. Uh, and banging that gong around. That was the other one, which was about cocaine. Didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and something new with Alex Bennett. Because I think the word "cokey" is used in that in the lyrics of that song. Yes, uh, the the lyric is she knew a guy named Smokey, who they say was cokey. Something like that. Yeah. 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 And he's banging that gong around. Now, for two Hershey bars, what was that song? Hmm. I thought it was called Banging That Gong Around. No, no. What was it called? Uh, I'm trying to remember now. You can't well, don't ask, ask the question ah! if you can't answer it. <laughs> this happens all the time on his show. Yeah, it does. That's like a woman saying, I'll go to sleep with you, but I forgot how to fuck. You know? <laughs> I thought that comes when they marry. Oh, no. no only, only Jewish women. Uh, That's not what I found out. The old joke was, how do you make a Jewish woman stop having sex? Marry her. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, I know you mentioned the Gilbert the Gilbert um, documentary. I, I know on Mondays too. I saw it, I watched it the last couple of days. Mm-hmm. It, it's pretty. It's pretty amazing to have a documentary like that before he died. You know. Oh yeah. Usually those documentaries come out after they die. Yeah. Well, I, I, I was telling earlier, maybe before you came on, or maybe you were on already. I was that, listening now. Yeah, yeah. The, the people should go uh, onto YouTube and find the roast of George Takai oh, with yeah. Gilbert yeah. Gottfried. He yeah. does he does 15 minutes of one gauge. Oh. See, here, I told you that I was at a hotel here in New York, the Pierre Hotel, uh, for high tea with uh, Penn Jillette and Gilbert Gottfried and a couple other people, okay? And then he and Gilbert started going into telling jokes one after the other and one filthier than the one that came before it all right and it went back and forth for a solid hour for a solid hour it was the most amazing piece of comedy i've ever had to, been able to witness and except for the few people who were there nobody will ever hear it again and the thing that came closest to it was watching gilbert do this roast of george takai because it was one some of these jokes were the jokes he actually said at the Pierre Hotel. And there were people all around having their crumpets and their tea and this stuff like that, right? And they're, they're telling these jokes about, uh, oh, yeah, two gay guys are in, a, uh, in a, uh, a jacuzzi, and all of a sudden sperm comes floating to the top, and one guy looks at the other and said, did you fart? Yeah. <laughs> but the whole, the whole St. Jude thing, I mean, I was in tears listening to them talk about, you know, the, the guys who spoke before him. And then I'm saying, like, he what went is he going to do? He's going to do his act in front of all those people? And yes, he did. Yeah, he did. And they were just, <laughs> they I were, was like, they I loved thought he it. was going to say a speech about his, his sister or something. And then he just started on the, and they were fucking and sucking and da-da-da-da. Oh I'll God. tell you, I'll tell you, he's a perfect example of how you can have somebody telling jokes and, and making them as filthy as possible, and somehow nobody takes offense at it. Yeah. He, he had that ability. I mean, he had the ability to get himself in trouble a lot, you know. Um, I mean, he, he certainly got in trouble with Aflac because of, he made a joke a couple of days after the tsunami hit, uh, hit, hit Japan, yeah. and then he, you know. He got Aflac. He said he lost his girlfriend, and they said, don't worry, another one will be floating by. <laughs> that, was it. Oh, God. that was it. Oh, my it was, God. It was, it was a tweet. It was a tweet is what it was. And Aflac yeah. was upset because they, some, their biggest customers were in Japan. <laughs> you know. And, uh, uh, and the other one he got in trouble for was when he was doing the Hugh Hefner Roast. 9-11. And, and, yeah. and 9-11 had taken place two days earlier. Um, uh, and and uh, he, he said, I'm, I, I'm, I was going to take a trip to California, but it looks like my plane may have been canceled. But if it isn't, I have, we have to make a stop at the Empire State Building. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what they say. You know, and, 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 I think it was, um, who was it I saw? Bill Maher, who after Ooh. his death was being interviewed by somebody. And said Gilbert was the king of too soon. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. You know, yeah, it, that was we, like Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. We always had it. We always have had jokes that we say, "Well, is it too soon for that?" You know, a comic will come up with a joke and say to the other comic, "Too soon for that." Gilbert never asked if it was too soon. It was did. never too soon. And I admired it because I often said that jokes were a way of us blunting the pain of something which is hurtful. Mm -hmm. And something like 9-11 is a very hurtful situation, but maybe the joke that you tell takes a little sting out of it, M makes it a little less, little less deadly. You, know, you still appreciate what happened. You don't like what happened, but it takes the pain away. Uh, and he, and said, he said that the one guy who was talking just before him about his daughter mm -hmm. having leukemia and stuff like that. And then uh, he said that when he was telling those jokes, he looked out in the audience and he could actually see that guy. And that guy was laughing so hard. So it really made him feel good. Well, because what, what you've done and you've in that moment, he did his job as a comedian. He took somebody who was living through a very troublesome time for that person and yeah. took him away from it for a moment. You know, mm -hmm. and made him laugh. What What's better than that? But people don't understand that. And so he got in a lot of trouble for being too soon. Yeah. You know, I often said, you know, like, I think the joke I always said is when, when the, remember when the Challenger blew up, uh, somebody said uh, the, a joke was going around. The joke was, you know why it blew up, don't you? Free basing. Right? And everybody would laugh. But they would say, that's too soon. Well, maybe it wasn't too soon. Maybe you needed that joke, you know? You needed that joke at that precise moment to take away the pain of the horror of what had happened. You know, it's not something we want you to forget, but we'd like to ease your pain a little bit from it, right. you know, so. And the only time the only time I made it to the studio to see you, I went to breakfast with Bennett's and, and all those, <clears throat> but in the, in the actual studio, uh, Gilbert was there. Yeah, really? So, yeah. Oh, okay. That's the only time. Yeah. But if you saw, if you saw Gilbert and that wonderful videotape of him doing oh. that joke that was too soon, mm -hmm. the recovery that he did. Well, no, the recovery. The recovery he did there wasn't a recovery so much as a diversion. What he did That's a good is he found good out choice. that they weren't laughing at his 9/11 joke. And he was going to turn, the audience was turning on him, basically. And immediately he went and told the aristocrats joke. Brilliant. Brilliant. You know, uh, and the aristocrats joke is like, you know, the, the, he, so by the time he was through with the aristocrats joke, they had forgotten all the 9-11 stuff. It was yeah. a, a brilliant diversion that he, that he did there, you know. Can I correct something? Sure. For Doc, Doc over there well that's not doc on this show that's right Alan. because we have a doc in See, australia I got two alans on my show yeah that song was minnie the moocher oh okay oh. yeah right you're right you had to look it up didn't you no i didn't look it up i just took i just you know like you i had to wait for my gear but my brain to get back in gear. Well, my, my he, brain doesn't what is he talking about my brain doesn't get back into gear until tomorrow you know yeah and then what is the, what, Minnie the Moocher, what's that got to do with Minnie life? the Moocher was the song I couldn't remember the title to. Yeah. Oh, last well, you night. Know, okay. Yeah, no, yeah. tonight, tonight, tonight. Yeah. But, well, I, I'll tell you, I had a thing going on in uh, uh, about a couple of days ago. I was telling the same story about high tea at the hotel, right? But I couldn't remember the name of the hotel. And it's been bothering me for like three days. I couldn't remember the name of the hotel. Couldn't remember the name of the hotel. And uh, th then all of a sudden, th today, at one point, I went, oh, the Pierre. Boom. You know, all of a sudden, it comes mm -hmm. clear. Yeah. Um, but uh, the only other time I had been to the Pierre Hotel <laughs> was to drop off a bowling ball at the, at the desk at the hotel. Now, I is this a joke? No, this is not a joke. Here's what happened. Uh, Yoko Ono got a hold of me and said, I'm doing an art piece up in Schenectady or someplace like that. And I, I wanna, I'm asking a whole bunch of people to supply me with something I can put water in. And it's, it, that, that's the artwork I'm gonna be doing. It's all these things that you can put wa water in. And uh, I couldn't figure out anything. And, 
Ronnie, my wife at the time, said, we got to get her something. And I'm, I look over. For some reason in the office, in my office, we had a bowling ball. Somebody, I think, had given it to me or something as a joke. And it was just sitting there. So I said, well, a bowling ball has holes in it. You can put water in it, right? And so, so, uh, Ronnie went, yeah, sure. So I, I grabbed the bowling ball and walked up about three blocks up to the Pierre Hotel and walked into the Pierre Hotel with a bowling ball and everybody's staring at me and I put it on the counter of the, you know, of the, of the what do you call it, the person who checks you in and they give me this look like, what are you doing dropping a bowling ball on our desk here? And I said, uh, this is for Yoko Ono and they went, oh, okay, we understand. <laughs> you know. So that was my that was my bowling ball at the Pierre Hotel joke story. Mm. Anyway, how are we doing on time? Uh, well, you're Jack. looking at the time. Jack's looking at the time. Bye, Jack. <laughs> See you guys later. Okay, bye, Jack. Everybody wave bye. goodbye to Jack. Can wave goodbye to Jack. So, um, uh, anybody do anything inter quickly? Anybody do anything interesting this back. weekend? What? Uh, what? Went to Mexico for a week. You, you, well, you went. You, of course, you're back on this show, but you were back on the Monday show, right? Yeah. And you, you went down to uh, Mexico on a little cruise with the family, yeah. all the kids. Yep. And the and yeah. and the frau and the kinder. Yeah, three thousand, four thousand other people. Three, four thousand other people. Just a small group. Three thousand guests and sixteen hundred people work there. Uh, I love and nothing like an intimate crew. You know, mm -hmm. intimate cruise. And How many people work there? Well, what did I, what, that ship, the uh, Sea of the Something, Something of the Ocean, the largest ship we have. Mm -hmm. They did a documentary on it. I was watching about what? how they operate it and so on and so forth. What, Jack's still here? He's trying to figure it out. <laughs> He's stuck. Is he still here? He, need, he needs one button. He can just like a big red button. He can just push it and it disconnects. Well, and it's as hard for him to get off as it is for Jeff to get on. Yeah. <laughs> and he's he, not talking he, about sex. Is he frozen? <laughs> is he frozen? No, he's not frozen. You know, he's moving. Oh, he's, he's still moving. moving. He's still moving. Yeah. Somebody quick, hold a mirror up to his mouth and see if he can get any. Oh, he's about ready to go, I think. I think he's going to. He's going to click the button any minute. There he goes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, so listen. Uh, yeah. So you had a nice trip is what happened. Yeah, it was nice relaxing. I got a uh, Sweden in three week, two weeks, and then I have maybe India and China back to back. So India, wow. after yourself, right at right after family. that. Yeah. For work. Oh, so we won't see you oh, for yeah. almost a month. Well, I may be up like at two in the morning to be on the show. So. Well, you know, when we go on at ten at night. If you're in China, it's ten at night, ten in the morning there. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Twelve hours. Do you know it's the same time uh, zone all over China? Mm. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They they just decided that was easier to do. Oh, hey, I look, I'm running out of uh, time here, and I didn't start the music. There we go. Hey, listen, guys, good having you here. Kevin, great having you here tonight. You as well, Charlie. Josh, always a pleasure to have you on our little little get-together. Uh, Alan, good seeing you here. You can go over now and uh, keep uh, Amy company. Uh, and uh, we have uh, Jeff. Thank you so much, Jeff. I had a lot to say. I know you did, and <laughs> I couldn't shut you up, could I? Uh, and of course, Brian, wonderful having you here tonight as well. Okay. Uh, everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay. Mm -hmm. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. There's our citizen panel. They're all hanging up on me, but I'll hang up on them before they get rid of me. There we go. I'll hit end, uh, end meeting for all. I got rid of them. Yay! I get it. Anyway. Uh, Jack's next, you know, with the intersection. You can call him at GabNet Live on Skype. No, you don't use Zoom. You use Sky old-fashioned Skype. Uh, in the meanwhile, i got to go pay my Netflix bill because, after all, I don't want them to go out of business. They lost something like 40% of their stock today. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. 
And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody.